Rusty's not very happy. Are you? No. He's scared. He's worried about the future of Canon. So, so a couple of weeks ago, I did a video looking at... Oh, right, calm down. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm sure they'll be fine. Yes. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a video uh, surrounding the news, if you can call it that, um, that Viltrox have been told by Canon that they can't release any third-party lenses anymore, and people were speculating that if that's the case, is that why Samyang, who did have two RF lenses, suddenly took them off the market? Is that why we've not seen any other third-party lenses? Since I've done that, there's been a little bit more what I believe is official information come out, and also a few other people speculating as to reasons why, and and I want to sort of cover what those potential reasons are and how each one might play out in the future. Calm down. We're okay. We're okay. So, the I believe it's official. There was a, a report out... It was reported that Canon in Germany or somewhere had confirmed that they'd ceased. They, they told Viltrox that their RF lenses were a breach of uh, patent rights and that they had to cease production. So it is. A f it seems pretty official that Canon have stopped third-party companies from producing RF lenses. Now the speculation as to why that might be. On the one hand, there's the potential argument that Canon just don't want third-party competition. That they they just they don't want ever to have third-party lenses for the RF mount. They just want everything to be their own lenses. And that way, you know, they know the people who buy RF cameras are going to have to buy lenses from them rather than buy a camera from Canon, but then go and spend their money with another company buying third-party lenses. Now, this concept has got, I'm going to say mixed reactions, but it's heavily weighted against. So on the one hand, there are some people who have been in favor of this or been indifferent to this, citing, you know, Canon's a business and they're there to make money, and fair enough, that is true. But there are other people that are, most people seem weighted more on on my uh, interpretation of what's going on, which is that it's not a very good idea. That yes, by closing off their their system and and doing everything just by themselves, yes, if they sell a hundred RF cameras, then they know those people have to buy lenses from them, so they're selling maybe a hundred or two hundred lenses. However, there are a lot of people who've commented on that previous video who are either current RF users who are now contemplating actually selling their RF gear and moving away because they were waiting for third-party lenses that now seemingly are never going to arrive, or people who were on EF mount contemplating moving to RF that are now contemplating not and moving to a different manufacturer because, again, no third-party support. So, on the one hand, yes, you might sell 100 cameras with no third-party support, and then you know you're selling that many lenses. But on the flip side, if you have third-party support, you could sell countless times more cameras because the system as a whole is just more appealing. So, I have a... Personally, I don't think it's a smart move from Canon. I think having the competition from third party makes a, a system more appealing. It gives people more uh, options to choose from. So the only way that I could see it working from that perspective for Canon with no third party support is if they were able to offer everything that third parties are offering or would be able to offer for the same sort of value. You know, for argument's sake, the Tamron 35 to 150, okay? About as unique a lens as there is on the market and has loads of, of hype around it. So that's available for Sony E-mount. There's a lot of hype that it's going to be available for Nikon Z-mount. 
I suspect there would be a lot of RF users who would be willing to buy that lens if it was available. But if it's not going to be available ever, then suddenly the RF system might, to some people, might look far less appealing than the Z or the E mount. Unless Canon could produce a 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8 for around the same sort of $1,500 mark and offer the same sort of performance. But they'd have to do that for every single third party lens. I don't personally think Canon would be prepared to offer that sort of overall quality at that sort of price. The margins, I think, would just be too slim for their, for their liking. So I suspect that we'll see them actually, they'll continue to, to put out lenses, but they won't fill every single gap in the focal length range. They won't, they won't manage every single type of lens around. And I don't think the, the value will be quite there. They'll, they might be better quality, but they'll also be far more expensive as well. And there are a lot of people who see the RF system and think the RF system looks good. The RF lenses are just too expensive. The L lenses are, look amazing, but they're also very, very pricey. Yes, they have got cheaper offerings, but they are quite limited as well. You know, the six and 800 mils, they're F11s and they're fixed F11s. There's no aperture control. The zoom lenses are all down to 6.3. There's no real fast, cheap zoom. So it just seems out of Canon's philosophy to do what they would need to do to really make it work with no third party support. Maybe I'm wrong because in some respects, it did seem like Canon have started to go down that avenue of offering more for less. Like the R10 and the R7, the R7 in particular, for the price point, seemed unbelievable. I genuinely thought it would be, for what they were offering in specs, I was expecting at least another five or six hundred dollars higher price tag that, you know, wasn't there. My first impression was maybe Canon were trying to pull a similar move to what it seems Sony did with the A7 III, offer a ridiculously high performance camera at a very cheap price in order to try and draw a lot of people into the system. And then once they're into the system, they're a bit more locked in, if you like. Maybe their plan is to do that with the R7 and a few other cameras and then start to hike the prices back up. Maybe they're thinking offer cheap cameras and then more expensive lenses and hope the cameras draw people into the system and then they'll just keep buying their lenses. Who knows? But either way, I just don't think the RF system is going to be as appealing to a lot of people without third party support. And if there is no third party support, I can see the numbers in terms of users dwindling quite a bit. There is some speculation that Canon want to have third party support, but they're just not ready for it yet. Now, I believe this is unconfirmed, but there was speculation that the third party lenses that Samyang and Viltrox produced weren't actually reverse engineered RF lenses. They were in fact EF lenses. They had EF firmware in them at least that then had additional coding of an adapter that then translated everything in the lens to work and communicate with an RF camera which maybe that's the patent infringement that Canon aren't happy about. But it doesn't look like companies have actually reverse engineered the RF mount directly. Now, some people have speculated that Canon have issues with the RF system at the moment that they're still trying to iron out. And only once they fix those issues, will they then be a bit more open to third party support? I don't buy it personally. For the simple reason that, I mean, the RF system's, what, three years old now? You would think by now, if there was major issues that was stopping, going to stop lenses being produced for it, it would be pretty high priority to get that fixed. But nothing. But not only that, Canon don't seem to have any problems producing lenses that work with it. I've not heard of anyone who's bought an RF camera with the Canon RF lenses and then found a load of glitches and problems with the lenses communicating. It doesn't seem to be the case. That's not to say there aren't some minor bugs and glitches and stuff that 
need to be addressed, but I don't see anything that severe because otherwise how are Canon producing lenses that work perfectly fine? This is where, even if there was some minor glitches, if Canon are able to produce lenses that work with it, then if they wanted to work with third-party companies, they would communicate those issues to third-party companies and whatever fixes Canon have got, whatever workarounds they've got, communicate with, with the other companies to say, this is how we've got around the problems, you're free, free to do the same. And then when there's firmware updates or whatever to address those issues, you liaise that with the third-party manufacturers who then can produce their own firmware to go into the lenses that then sort of work around that problem. That is how, you know, open communication with third parties work. It's Sony have seemingly been doing it with third-party companies. Nikon have now started doing it with Tamron. They're actually in an open dialogue with each other where Nikon actively seem, seem to actively want Tamron to produce lenses for them, so they're offering them all the information they need to make the autofocus systems in the lenses work pretty much flawlessly with the cameras. If Canon wanted to do that, they would have done it. If they're able to produce lenses for their own camera bodies, there's no reason why they couldn't instruct third-party companies on how to do the same. So the fact that they've not done that points more towards that not being a reason why there's no third-party support. It seems more like Canon are just very against the idea of third-party companies producing lenses that are then competition to them. Like I've said, that I think is a bad move from the reaction, the general overall reaction that I've seen from people. It's a very negative response from people. So I think it's ruffled a lot of feathers and I think Canon are going to start seeing big hits in their sales figures over the next coming years. Now, that's obviously not to say that there will never be third-party support, but it seems more likely that at the moment, Canon don't want third-party support until maybe they see an impact on their sales figures. And then maybe they'll think, oh, actually, that's a bad idea. Now we should open up third-party support. The issue then lies is are third-party companies going to want to work with them? You know, if if Canon turn around to the likes of Sigma and Tamron and say, oh, look, I know we said we didn't want third-party support, but actually we've changed our mind now and we're we're willing to, to work with you. Are Sigma and Tamron going to say, nah, you're all right. You know, we're, 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 we're doing fine. Our productions are all running pretty much flat out. You know, we're, we're struggling to keep up with current demand. We don't want to add more in, so go swivel. You know, in that instance, is that going to leave Canon then, whose only options then will be going to smaller, less well-known third-party companies and trying to basically build back up market confidence? Or are they then just going to say, well, we can't get third-party support, so we'll just have to keep going with our own stuff? Or There's a, there's a, a big risk, I think, in, in burning bridges with third-party companies now and, and saying outright absolutely no lawsuits galore and whatnot else. You know, if in the future you then want to try and sort of repair those bridges, they might not be so open to it. And that then might leave the RF system overall in a in a far worse condition than it could have otherwise been. Not even if Canon had been proactive in saying to companies, you know, here is what you need to make lenses for our system, but even just leaving them freely to try and reverse engineer, which is essentially what happened with lenses on their old EF systems. You know, on the DSLRs, Sigma and Tamron had to reverse engineer everything. Canon, as far as I'm aware, at least, Canon didn't proactively say, we want you to make lenses for our system. They just, Sigma and Tamron had to try and reverse engineer all the algorithms in order to figure out how to make the lenses work. And then when Canon produced new cameras, produced firmware updates for cameras, they'd inherently cause problems with the third party, stuff that the software wasn't coded for that wasn't canon's issue that was sigma and tamron's problem which is why they then started producing introducing firmware updates via docks and usb cables and whatnot else so that they could then tweak the firmware to work with the new cameras and correct any issues and but that's not canon's issue so 
you know, it's not like Canon are saying, oh, well, we don't want third party support because we're worried about how it's going to look if third party lenses don't work well on our cameras. It's not their problem. Nobody's going to buy an RF camera and then buy a third party lens and think, oh, well, the third party lens doesn't work. This camera's shit. They're going to think it's the lens. The lens has got an issue. The lens manufacturer needs to address the issue. If you bought a Canon lens and it didn't work, that would obviously be a bit different. But I've, I've ranted for too long. I've, I've lost my place now. Yeah, it just seems more like Canon are just so hell-bent against third party that they don't want third party at all. That they're not even prepared to let third party companies try and reverse engineer their own their algorithms and even might not work flawlessly and give people the option of, well, you can have cheap, but it's going to be a bit glitchy or you can pay a bit more and have the stuff that actually works. They just seem more on the lines of, no, no third party support and anyone that tries to produce third party, we're going to threaten with a lawsuit. And I just don't think it's going to end well for them personally, but time will tell. Let me know your thoughts, though. Uh, you know, let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.